This tutorial will show you how to use electrical synapses in NMATLAB. An electrical synapse allows current to flow directly between two neurons. It bypasses the normal neurotransmitter communication system. This means it's a much faster way for neurons to communicate and is typically found in systems that need really fast reaction times, like escape systems. An electrical synapse is modeled as a nonspecific electrical conductance linking two neurons. This means that current flows from one neuron to the other whenever there is a difference between the membrane potentials of the two neurons and the conductance is greater than zero. Let's begin this tutorial by creating a new project. A copy of this project is available at Program Files, Animate Lab, Tutorials, Neural Networks. Please decide where you want to create this project and then name it Electrical Synapses. Once the project is created, add a new organism and open its behavioral editor. We need to add two neurons to the diagram. After that's done, draw a synaptic connection between the two neurons. When the Synapse Types dialog appears, select the Non-Rectifying Electrical Synapse and hit OK. Non-Rectifying Synapses allow current of either polarity to pass in either direction between the two neurons. To demonstrate this, let's add some stimuli to the two neurons. Start by adding a tonic current stimulus to neuron 1. Have it start at 50 milliseconds, end at 110 milliseconds, and set the amplitude to 30 nanoamps. Now create another tonic stimulus for neuron 2. Set it to start at 200 milliseconds, end at 260 milliseconds, and have the amplitude the same at 30 nanoamps. Now we need to create a line chart so we can look at the membrane voltages of our neurons. Create a chart and add items for each of the neurons. Then set the end time to be 300 milliseconds and change the collect data interval to match the time step of 0.2 milliseconds used by the neural simulator. This will allow us to see the details of the simulation. Now run the simulation. We can see that depolarization in neuron 1 caused a similar small depolarization in neuron 2 and vice versa. Now let's switch the current to be negative. We again see that the current passes through without rectification. When neuron 1 is hyperpolarized, it causes a corresponding hyperpolarization in neuron 2. Let's change the stimulus currents back to being positive. Then let's switch the synaptic type from non-rectifying to rectifying. Let's also change the low coupling value to be 0 0.05 microsiemens, and then the turn-on threshold to be 0 millivolts. These parameters change the response characteristics of the rectifying synapses. The properties for the electrical synapses are relatively straightforward. There's a linear relationship between the membrane voltage at the junction and the conductance of the synapse. Upper and lower bounds limit the amount that the conductance can change. Any voltage less than the turn-on threshold will make the conductance equal to the low coupling conductance value. Voltages above the turn-on saturated threshold 
will make the conductance equal to the high coupling conductance value. In between these values, conductance acts linearly to connect those two points. This allows you to change the conductance based on the membrane voltage, and in this case, when the potential drops below zero volts, the conductance will be very small. To make a non-rectifying synapse, you simply need to set the high and low coupling conductance values to be the same. Then the conductance won't change regardless of the membrane potential, and current will be able to flow in both directions. We now have a rectifying synapse that allows current to pass from neuron 1 to 2, but retards current flow in the opposite direction. Run the simulation, and you can see that the depolarizing current passes happily from neuron 1 to 2, but very little of it passes from 2 to 1. Also, neuron 2 now spikes to the depolarizing stimulus, whereas it previously didn't. This is because when it was connected to the non-rectifying synapse to neuron 1, it leaked a certain amount of depolarizing current through that synapse, and therefore had a reduced voltage shift. Now that the synapse is rectifying from neuron 1 to 2, and thus essentially closed from the point of view of the positive current in neuron 2, all current injected into neuron 2 goes into the depolarizing it, and none is lost through the synapse in depolarizing neuron 1. Now let's reverse the polarity of the stimulus again and see what happens. At first glance, it appears that the rectification is backwards. Hyperpolarization of neuron 2 led to a large hyperpolarization of neuron 1, but the hyperpolarization of neuron 1 only had a minimal effect. However, you need to remember the way the ions and currents are actually flowing. Since we're hyperpolarizing neuron 2, then this would cause positive ions to flow out of neuron 1 into neuron 2, which is the direction the ions are allowed to flow because of the rectification but it prevents this flow in the other direction. This tutorial has demonstrated some basic principles for using electrical synapses in your projects.